Hello again, welcome back to the game room. This is Hunter from Weapons Grade Tabletop. I wanted to do a quick video over the basics of X-Wing, kind of give you a primer on how to play the game. We'll be talking about basic maneuvers, taking the turn, different actions and point costs, and just all the abilities on a normal ship. Nothing too advanced right off the bat, so just don't worry about that. If you've never played before, this is the perfect jumping on point. This will be something we can build on for squad building videos, things like that in the future. Uh, so stay tuned. We'll go over just the game turn first. I'll be talking about the uh, ships and their abilities. Then we'll go into actually taking a turn, doing movement and tactics. Hope you enjoy. First, let's look at a couple of ship cards. Here on the left, we have a rookie pilot in an X-Wing. And on the right, we have a black squadron pilot in a TIE fighter. There's a lot of numbers and symbols. We'll kind of break it down one by one here. Here at the top in orange, we have pilot skill. Essentially, the higher the pilot skill, the better the pilot. Higher pilot skill gets to shoot first, which is very important. Here in red, we have the strength of the primary weapon. The strength of the weapon indicates how many dice you're going to roll to attack the other ships. Uh, the higher the dice, obviously, is the better. In this case, the X-Wing has more because it's got better firepower. Here in green is the evasion. The evasion of the ship indicates how many dice they'll ro roll to defend against those same attacks. In this case, the TIE Fighter is higher because it's more nimble. The yellow here is hull points. That's essentially how much life a ship has. They're both equal at 3, which is pretty decent. Down here at the bottom in light blue is shields. And that's where the big difference here is. Shields are essentially bonus HP that block all types of attacks, critical or non-critical hits. In this case, the X-Wing's better shielding gives it much better defense, which essentially gives it 5 HP to the TIE Fighter 0. So the TIE Fighter has to make up with its, with its superior evasion. Down here at the very bottom, you'll see a little bar with icons on it. These little icons down here indicate what kind of equipment upgrades that you can take. We'll talk about more of those in the later episode probably, not in this one. Here are the actions you can take on a given turn. Essentially, each turn a ship is going to move, and then it's going to take an action. In this case, the X-Wing can take a focus action, or a target lock action while the TIE Fighter can take a focus, a barrel roll, or an evade. It can't take a target lock though, and the X-Wing can't take an evade or a barrel roll. So as you can see, there's a lot of differences between these ships. Another difference is going to be the point cost here at the very bottom right. The X-Wing, despite its lower pilot skill, is still 21 points. It's expensive because it's got good shields, and it's got great attack. The TIE Fighter is a better at Swarm, so it's going to be cheaper, 14 points. And there's even cheaper versions and more expensive versions of every ship. Pilots can be pretty much named anything. You can have Luke Skywalker as a, as a pilot for an X-Wing. You can have HAL Runner, the named TIE Fighter pilot. And they'll have varying pilot skills. Usually they go up from here. Now let's move on to some movement dials and talk about the ships themselves. Here we have a couple of the movement dials. Each ship gets its own movement dial, no matter what the pilot name is. So the pilot here doesn't matter, the X-Wing just has one movement dial, and it doesn't matter if this is a Black Squadron, this is going to be essentially a TIE Fighter. So X-Wing and TIE Fighter, and there's the same templates used for all games. However, not every ship gets access to every template. In this case, the X-Wing has a straight one, but if you look here at the TIE Fighter and go through its style, it doesn't have a straight one. It can do a really hard right or a left one, but not a straight. Some other differences here, if you go across, the TIE Fighter, being one of the most nimble ships, gets a straight 5, which is extremely long distance, whereas the X-Wing can only do a straight 4. And you'll see different colors on the dial as well. White is just a normal maneuver. A red indicates that it's a stressing maneuver. Essentially these are maneuvers that are harder to pull off for pilots no matter how skilled they are. And they give you a stress token. Stress tokens prevent you from taking an action, which we'll go over a little bit later. Then you'll also have these green. Green essentially removes the stress. When you use a green maneuver, you can take a stress token off if you have one. You don't have to have a stress token to use a green maneuver, 
but you can't follow up a red maneuver with a red maneuver, and you can't remove a stress token without doing a green maneuver. So essentially, after doing a red maneuver, you're almost always going to want to do a green to get that stress token off. Now I'll kind of go over some of the basic movement in general, how to use these dials essentially. Let's take a quick look at an example of movement. So here we have the rookie pilot in an X-Wing again, and here we have the X-Wing dial. So at the beginning of the turn, the player selects a move secretly from their opponent and sets the dial next to the sheet. In this case, I'm just going to choose a straight one, make it real easy. You place it face down here next to the pilot. So in the case of movement, the lower pilot skill goes first. So out of those two pilots we looked at, this will be the lowest at two. So I'll reveal the dial here, and we're going to move a straight one. Now to actually move, you'll use the included templates. Essentially there's a straight straight one, a cur light curve one, and a hard curve. And then there's similar movement for each template, except for the four and five. The bigger the number, the farther the movement. So this is a straight one. What you'll do, if you look at the ship itself, there's these two little notches here on the front. And what you'll do is you'll match up the notch with the template itself. It kind of fits right in there. So when you lay it down, you'll match this. Let's look at it from this angle. Match that. And then you just move the ship. So simply do the match. Leave the template. They just set the ship right there. Same notches on the back. And your movement's over. And you'll do the same thing for every ship. But it can be longer. Say, for the TIE Fighter we had earlier, this is a 5. So that's how far a 5 moves. And this is a 1. You kind of get a sense of how far the ships can move. And then some of the, the titles there, where you're looking at the uh, movement, like we are looking at those red moves a little bit earlier, Let's find one here. There's one. That's called a Corgan turn or a K turn. Because a lot of people can't pronounce it. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Essentially, a K turn is just what it looks like. It's just turning around. So, in this case, he has a 4K turn, which is this template right here. And it's really simple. It's the same concept. You put, you match it up, and then you move it. I'm going to keep it on camera here. But instead of just ending like this, you'll end like this. So you essentially turn around. It's a great move for getting people that are tailing you, things of that nature. The one problem is, since it's a red maneuver, it'll give you a stress. Again, we'll be going over that in just a second. So, hopefully that gives you kind of a basics of movement. Uh, let's go over some of these actions and talk about stress a little bit more. Let's take a look at the X-Wing again here. As you can see on that little bar down here again at the bottom, this white bar, you'll see an eyeball and a crosshairs. These indicate the actions you can take after moving. So say we did that short one and this is where we ended up. I could either take a focus, which is the eyeball, or a lock on, which is the little crosshair icon. So let's say we took the focus. We get one of these little green tokens here and put it near next to the ship. Now we'll kind of go through the power here in a little bit because we haven't really talked about dice rolls yet. But essentially a focus lets you control your dice rolls a little bit more in different ways. On offense, it'll let you turn those eyeball results into hits. And on defense, it'll let you turn eyeball results into evades. So it works both ways for you. Now the lock-on is a little bit different. It's only going to work on offense. Essentially, it gives you these tokens, these red and blue. You put the blue on you, and you'll put the red on another ship that's in your range. We'll talk about range here in a little bit, but essentially it lets you re-roll attack dice. Other power-ups will it'll also let you use like proton torpedoes. You'll have to have a target lock to spin to use the proton torpedoes. So it's handy. It's really handy on offense. Focus is a generally useful one because it's good all the time, but lock-ons are very useful as well. Now let's have a look at the TIE Fighter. He also has a focus, as do most ships, because focusing is usually just a generally useful action. He also has a barrel roll and an evade. Let's start with the evade, it's kind of the simplest. Essentially, evade lets you get a little evade token. 
It's very similar to the focus token, a little green swervy line. Essentially, it gives you an automatic dodge on an attack. So if someone attacks you and only rolls one hit, if you have this evade, there you go. You don't even have to roll pretty much. It's a pretty useful ability. Only works on defense, but it's an automatic miss. The barrel roll is a little more complicated, but extremely useful. Essentially, it's a bit of a maneuver. Whereas most ships only get to do their one maneuver, a barrel roll allows you to kind of manipulate your move a little bit more. In the case of a barrel roll, you take your little one die, uh, one die here, and you put it next to your ship. Then you can take your ship and place it on the other side. And it can do go like up a little bit, stay in the same spot, stay here. Essentially, as long as this completely lines up here, you can put your ship wherever you want. And that's useful because you can kind of get out of someone's firing arc and kind of manipulate where you are on the battlefield, which is always useful. Speaking of firing arc, let's, that's what we're going to talk about next, and where this little template comes into play a little bit more. Here we have the X-Wing and the TIE Fighter facing off. They're pretty much dead ahead here, and you'll see on the X-Wing's base that you have this little triangle. Essentially, this indicates where he can shoot. This thing that I'm holding here is the measuring template. This is going to be for shooting attacks and for measuring deployment, things like that. Essentially, instead of using like a measuring tape or a rule stick, this is what you'll be using in X-Wing. So if you look at the base, this front firing arc, you'll measure with the stick here to see if you can shoot. Obviously, in this case, you cover it here, and bam, he's got him right there. Now, the numbers in are important because they indicate range. The closer you are, the better it is. The farther away, the worse it is. In this case, they're in range 2 which is no bonus, positive or negative, to either ship. Let's say they were a little bit closer. Let's pull it up a little bit here. So here, the ships are within one of each other. If you're within one, the attacker gets to roll a bonus attack die when he's rolling. So essentially, the X-Wing will get four attack dice, which is amazing for them. Now let's pull a little bit farther here. Almost off camera. We'll measure it here. And as you can see, the TIE Fighter is within 3, just barely, but he's, he's in the 3 range. That'll give the TIE Fighter a bonus of 8 die, which for TIE Fighters is really good because that puts him up to 4. It's going to be really hard to hit him. But within 2, they're pretty much equal. It's just their straight up attack to the straight up evade. To resolve an attack, you're going to roll the red attack dice versus the green evade dice. And here's what those look like. So, let's say the X-Wing is doing an attack here. We're going to take three of these dice and roll. So, here's the result. This little asterisk here is a hit. This eye is one that you'd be able to focus if you had one, and that's just a blank. So, now the TIE Fighter has a chance to do something. If the X-Wing wanted to at this point, if they had a focus, they could spin that focus and turn that into a hit. So say we did have a focus, we turn that into a hit. So that's two hits. Now the TIE Fighter gets three, which is their evade, and rolls that. So we got two evades and oh, a focus. So in this case, we get evade both shots. We would take no damage. Now let's say we didn't roll that. We rolled an evade and a blank. That means we're going to take a damage. And the way damage works in this game is a little bit different. Essentially, instead of just adding tokens to your card, you get these cards from a damage deck. And this is what those look like. They're little explosions on the back. Now, why cards? The reason you use cards is because sometimes you'll get critical hits. And if critical hits aren't blocked by shields, they happen. So what happens is, instead of taking this card and just taking one damage face down, you'll flip it up and do whatever's on the card. So in this case, I got a direct hit, which means it just takes two damage immediately instead of one. So that's where that comes into play. And those can be very damaging. You'll have other abilities like, here's another one here, Console Fire. Essentially, you'll have to roll the die every at the beginning of every combat phase, and if you roll a hit, you'll suffer a damage. 
So, it's tough. But, you see, at the bottom you can take an action to flip this card face down. Which is another place where actions will come up on damage cards and on other cards like upgrades. So, actions won't just be what's on the, on the ship itself. But, that's all we're going to really cover for now, just to keep it simple. So, that's pretty much the basics of combat and movement. Let's take a just a quick turn or here with the ships, kind of give you an idea of what it looks like all put together. So we have a battlefield set up, not the normal size, kind of moved it in. Usually it's on a 3 foot by 3 foot area. I just did a pretty close so we can get into combat quicker. So we have all the dials laid out, and this is where pilot school comes into play again. Because lower pilot school actually has to move first and take its actions first, which means they kind of have to show their hand. And they may not know where the ships are going to be before they take their actions, so it, it, it's a little bit tougher for them. But we're going to be moving first here with the Rookie X-Wings. So let's go ahead and start with this one here. And he's got a little curving too. Let's find that template here and move him. So we move him there. So remember he has two choices for actions. He can either take a focus or he can take a target lock. So we'll measure if he can do a target lock. Essentially, he has to be within three, and it could be anywhere around him. So it doesn't matter if he can see him necessarily. As long as they're within three, he could take a target lock on him. So he can actually see... He's in range of this one. He's pretty, Yeah, he's in range of both of them. So he's going to take a target lock on this first one. And as remember, the target locks will let him reroll dice. And if he had something like proton torpedoes, he might be able to use those as well. In this case, he doesn't, but that's pretty common on X-Wing is proton torpedoes. So let's look at this one. He's moving a light one. And you can kind of see we're flying in a bit of a formation here. So kind of keeping even. And for his action, he's going to take a focus. So there's their actions for the turn. And the X-Wings get to move next. So let's do this one in the end. He's just going to move a straight two. Now one interesting aspect of his uh, action is it's possible he might be able to get out of the firing arc of this X-Wing. So if you remember that barrel roll action from earlier, let's see what happens here. So he's going to try to barrel roll here. He's going to go right there. So let's measure here. And there you go. TIE fighter safe for the turn. So that kind of, that, now you can kind of see where the higher pilot skill is going to matter. It lets him get out of the way. He knows that he's got a target lock on him. This one right here. So he knows he's got to avoid the next shot. And that gives him a way to avoid it. And you have this one here. He's going to do another straight two. Now, he's not going to be as fortunate. He's going to get shot pretty much no matter what. So maybe he wants to take an evade. Kind of protect himself for the turn. Because he's got both guys bearing down on him. And this last one is going to be doing a three. A curvy three here. Like a light curve. And again, we're trying to stay in formation. They're not doing a very good job. Just kind of wanted to vary up the movement, though. And he'll take a... Hmm, let's go ahead and take a focus with him. We'll just throw all three on there. So let's go ahead and try to do some combat. So as you can see, measuring these out, the TIE Fighters are within range. And they all seem to be within two. Yep, they're all within two. So... The best idea with a TIE Fighter is to kind of focus fire on one guy. In this case, we've got a guy with a target lock and a guy with a focus. The target lock is more dangerous in the long run because when you have one of those target locks, it stays on the ship. So even after the turn's over, that target lock is still going to be on this TIE Fighter. The focus tokens and other tokens like that, evade, things of that nature, go away at the end of the turn. So they're not going to be as dangerous. So we're going to focus fire on the guy with the target lock. So the one with the focus token here is going to shoot at him first. He has focus, so he can change any of those eyeballs to hits. So we're going to see it give him the best odds to hit. So we roll two. We roll one hit. 
and one eyeball. And we're going to go ahead and turn that into a hit. So that's going to be two hits. The X-Wing has two defense dice. So we're going to go ahead and roll two. And he gets an evade and an eyeball. He doesn't have a focus token, so that eyeball is a miss. And he has the evade. So he dodges one and takes the other hit. So over here on the card, we're going to take off a shield token. That goes away. He's only got one shield left until you start taking off hull points. So this one's going to shoot next. He's going to shoot two again. And he gets a hit. The X-Wing rolls two defense dice. And he gets another focus. Again, no focus tokens. And a miss. So he takes yet another damage. And there goes the last shield. And finally, this little slippery guy over here is going to take his last shot. We roll two dice. Wow, two hits. That is going to be hurting. Here we go. We're going to dodge it. And we do not. So we got a blank and an eyeball. No focus to change it. So he takes two damage. But those are regular hits, so he just takes two off the damage deck. And they'll be face down. And they're on his card now. So he has one life left. But now the X-Wings get to attack back. And they're going to do something similar. They're going to focus fire on one guy. This one over here has lost his focus since he used it on that attack. But this one still has an evade. He's going to be harder to take down. So they're going to ignore him for now. We can't hit this one on the over here on the uh, their right because he d barreled out of the way. So we know we're within two range. So we're going to focus fire here on number two. So this one with the focus is going to attack first, since he has the better odds. Wow, we got three regular hits. We don't even need to use the focus. So now, this one gets to take his evade. And he's got three dice since he's a TIE Fighter. And we got one evade, one focus. However, he already used his focus on his attack. So that's a miss, and a miss. So he's going to take two damage. Their normal damage, they're just going to go on his card. So the other X-Wing is going to shoot at him now, too. Ooh, so we got a focus. He doesn't have a focus token, so that's useless. We have a regular hit. And then we have a critical hit, a little hollowed out one. So what's going to happen now is he's going to roll his evade dice. Okay, so we're going to roll the defense dice now. Okay, and we have an evade, a focus and a focus. Now the focus again, those are useless. And we have one evade. Now the problem is we have two hits. And he's only got one life left. So that's going to spell the end for that TIE Fighter since he only has three life. Now one thing I do want to mention, even though it doesn't matter in this situation, is that we have one hit and we have one crit. Evades have to block regular hits first. So in this case, say if he didn't have one life left, he would be taking a critical hit now. So let's see what that would have been. A direct hit. So he would have taken two damage instead of one. Now if he had shields like the X-Wing, he could have blocked that. But in this case he didn't. So this ship is now gone. And that kind of gives you a basic idea of how the game works. In this case, the X-Wing's superior firepower was able to take down a ship in one turn but we were able to take down one of the X-Wings down to one life. So it evens out in the end. Essentially, the lighter, faster ships can focus on the bigger ships and take them down just as easily as the smaller ones that have more firepower because they can't spread their firepower out. It's just how you play. It's up to your play style. And that's what's great about the game. Well, thanks for watching that little overview. And I hope you're more interested in the game if you haven't played it yet or have learned something from it. It's one of my favorite miniatures games right now, and one of my favorite new games in the past year. Uh, Fantasy Flight is a great company, and putting a lot of support behind the game. Uh, the sculpts look great, the tournament scene's a lot of fun, and just playing at home's a lot of fun. There's giant ships, small ships, those kind of things we'll go over later, as well as the customization. It's a lot of fun to play with the next wing, but it's a whole different thing when you get to customize your own next wing when you get to fly Wedge Antilles, and throw different astromech droids, things like that. We'll go over a lot of that stuff in a later video, give you a more of an in-depth look at it. But for now, uh, like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you think. Thanks again for watching.